I was in uh, Kathmandu when I read a dispatch from AFP, Agence France Presse, dated from Calcutta, and I knew that something was happening, of course, through this dispatch. And also, the Pakistani government had closed Bangladesh, future Bangladesh, to the press, foreign press. And I thought I would immediately go there and try and get in, because when you close a country to the press, you have something to hide. And there were already rumors of massacres. This was on very early April. It was uh, after Operation Searchlight had started in the night of 25th to 26th of March. So immediately I flew to Calcutta and uh, I tried to enter via Jasor, but I was turned back a couple of times. And then I teamed up with three other members of the press, AP, CNN, and a French photographer, Michel Laurent. We hired a car, beaten down, took three jerry cans of petrol and we drove up north and reached the border further up. And the BSF led us through there. We had to, of course, Parliament, I mean, speak, uh, you know, for convince them that we wanted to get in. And then we started sort of progressing into Bangladesh. Well, first we ran into an observation post, which was in bamboo and some people came out and they showed us the flag flying on a tall bamboo pole. It was a Bangladesh flag. And they said with a big smile, you are now in free Bangladesh. This was exhilarating, of course, for them and for us. Then we proceeded to Shwadanga, where we met Dr. Ashabul Haq Jorder, who told us about the situation. He briefed us. He showed us that Kulna was under siege. There was also Rashai and several other places. And he directed us to the headquarters of uh, Major Chaudhry, Osman Chaudhry, where we were given transport to proceed further. So we took our jerry cans and we were put on a jeep and we proceeded to Kushtia. Then we went on up to Rajbari and Gwalondogat. What we experienced, what I experienced along the way, it was between seeing freedom fighters that were ready to go to the end, give their lives for the freedom of Bangladesh. They were very poorly equipped, but nevertheless, they said we were gonna fight. We were denied our democratic rights after the elections of December 1970, and we won free Bangladesh, down with martial law, and Sheikh Mujib is our leader. And then, on the other side, you had all the refugees that were pouring down from further east, and some were on foot, some were in horse carts, some were trying to flee on, you know, by train. There were whole families that were carrying very little, leaving everything behind them for an uncertain future. So on one side you had the courage and the strength, on the other side you had people that were really sort of bearing the brunt and the impact of the war, you know, that had started, and fleeing massacres. And when we were at some point, we were proceeding by train and people were massing at the railway stations and they were asking us, you must tell your country, we need foreign help, we need modern military equipment. And some, a young man came into our compartment in Pangsha. He was coming from Dhaka. He said, my teachers have been massacred. 15 of my friends have been killed. Women are being raped. You must convey to the world what is going on now? We need your help. You have to intervene. When I arrived in Rajbari and Golondogat, we were supposed to cross the Padma that night, but the army, Pakistani attacked. There were gunboats coming down from Chittagong, and we were told that if we crossed that night, we might be taken, arrested by the Pakistani army. So, of course, I decided at that stage to bring the news out to Calcutta because our aim was to enter quickly, get out quickly, and break the ban on news that had been imposed by the Pakistani for a couple of weeks. And that night, all hell broke loose. There was a lot of fighting, and that was a difficult time to, because one wanted to get out of the country. So a train was set up in the middle of the night so I could get out to Kushtia. Of course, a lot of refugees it was packed with refugees by the time it left around two o'clock in the morning. And we had asked our taxi to wait for us three, four days 
the, the car, it was a taxi in um, Schwadanga. And thank God the taxi had waited for us. And I was the only one to come out. The others went on to Dhaka, but I came out and I was able to take the news out to Calcutta and to get it out to the world. So the only difficulty occurred in the Gwalondogat, where it was, you know, touch and go. Either you went or you came out with the news immediately. And I chose to get out with the news as quickly as possible. This exhibition is a good thing. I just know that this exhibition is a good thing. So, I think it's a good thing. 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 I don't know what to do. So, I am going to go back to the house. I am going to go back to the house. I am going to go back to the house. I am going to go back to the house. I am going to go back to the house. I am going to go back to the house. I am going to go back to the house. I am going to go back to the house. I am going to go back to the house. पुटे होते हैं जब इधर लोग मंदिर दे शेष समय जो अकुतु भाई ये बांगली रा जुद्दे झापिये पड़े चलो तादर के देखा एक बारो शुद्ध दे चें एंडी हैनिंग एक छोभी मंदिर में ऐतो झुकी नहीं है बांगलादेश के मानुष जुद्दो संग्राम चेटा के फोटोग्राफी मुद्दे धोरे रखे चें I'm sure that this exhibition is going to be a tremendous success. Well, at, in Pangsha, I was taken to a field where there was a group of men of all ages, young boys, but older people, and they were practicing to fight with bows and arrows. If you imagine, this was the time of the war in Vietnam, if you remember what they were fighting with, and there you were in Bangladesh with people showing you their de determination to fight, to give their life, you know, for the country, for the independence of the country, and practicing, you know, to fight with bows and arrows. That really blew my mind. Oh, yes, one, there were people that were jailed because Kushya had been retaken after they were attacked by the Pakistani army, and uh, it was recovered by the freedom fighters, so there were people behind bars. And one of them told me, we didn't realize we were hated that much on this side. They didn't know. They thought that, you know, they would be uh, greeted probably like liberators. They didn't realize how much the people wanted them out. Well, there's one of a young Mukti Bahini. He's just turning his head like this, so you see his face, but he's, I took him from the back. He has an old 303 Lee Enfield rifle slung across his shoulder. He's bare chested, he's wrapped in a lungi, and obviously walking to his combat unit. And he wasn't the only one going, you know, to fight in the same condition, very little equipment, but ready. You can see he's walking very briskly. He's going, he's intent on fighting to, live, you know, to free his country, to participate to the liberation war. That was one. There's another one of a family who are about to board a train. You have a whole family. There is a young boy, the two girls, the mother, and there's fear, you can see in their eyes. They're leaving, they're, they don't know what they're gonna find. They are carrying a transistor radio, a live duck. I don't know if they had, they must have had you know, some other luggage with them or something, bags. But in their eyes, you can see the fear. You can see what they've left behind. You can see they're fleeing the danger of massacre. And for me today, I wonder, I say, what has happened to that little boy? What has happened to this young woman? I would love to know, I would like to know what happened. What, what was their life afterwards, 50 years later? But, you know, I won't know. Well, there was an immense crowd and they, they were absolutely silent, listening intently to Sheikh Mujib. And he was on stage, he had tremendous charisma. You could see his gesture, you could see his words, and you could see mostly from the people who were listening. And uh, what was really striking was how 
he could change his mood from such vigorous speech and how he carried his voice to the people and his words. And then he would sit down and fill his pipe, smoke his pipe, look at his notes, take a glass of water, and then stand up again and address the people. This was extremely striking, this way his composure, how he could switch from one mood to the other and completely self-composed. That was uh, extremely moving to see how the crowd was listening to him. I arrived yesterday morning after 50 years, so obviously Dhaka has changed, it's another place. But also what really struck me, and I think it's by chance that I arrived today, I should have arrived uh, uh, yesterday, I mean, I should have arrived the day before, but I arrive on Victory Day. And I walked in the streets near Parliament and I saw all the people dressed in green and red, the women with beautiful uh, flowers, you know, in their hair. And it's, uh, it's a new country, it's another country. And I saw the birth of the country and 50 years later, I see it celebrating Victory Day. In a, in a very sort of a joyful way. So that was like a, a, a gift to see 50 years later, 16th of December, and I'm here. So it's another generation that is now experiencing freedom. And uh, through the show, I hope they realize what sacrifice has been made by the older generation so they could enjoy Victory Day today, 50 years later.